Hi guys, Brain here, and welcome to another video. Today, I wanted to talk, maybe in a semi-rant sort of situation. I don't, I don't want to get too mad. <laughs> so, but I am going to be talking from more from the chest today, talking about this whole phenomenon of stacking second chance perks and stacking slowdown. Because I think we can all agree, no matter what side we play, that when the other side plays mostly with really strong perks or really strong items and a combination of those things, the game gets really annoying like really quickly and i want to i want to i don't think this is like revolutionary to say but i think the main thing that i want to say is if you're out here and you're running three plus slowdown to win your games or if you're on survivor and you're only ever stacking like prove toolboxes and doing the whole nine yards with that i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you suck at the video game like you are literally trash at this video game. You you are bad, and I don't mean that in like a like I I'm cross with you. Like you personally hurt my feelings, quote unquote, right? Like I'm not saying this like a oh well you personally upset me. I'm saying like from an objective standpoint, you're showing me, you're showing me that when you stack on all that stuff, you stack three slow down, you stack a bunch of gen uh, aggression perks, you stack a bunch of second chance perks. What you're telling me is that you can only get results if the game is overwhelmingly rigged in your favor. If the only way that you're winning your games is by literally forcing the other team to redo things they've already done correct, in the case of, of triple plus slowdown, you don't know how to pressure gents. So you got to rely on perks to do it for you. Same thing with like second chance perks on the survivor side. You weren't good enough to do it the first time. So you stacked a bunch of second chance perks so you could do it again. The killer already played right the first time. You just wanted to stack a bunch of perks that essentially get you out of there initially or get you out of there with like oh, off of the survivor side. It's just a press of a button. And that's just ridiculous. That to me, that objectively shows a lack of skill and a lack of ability to make plays on your own part. And, and, the, and the main thing that I want to talk about here on top of that is that this isn't just sour grapes. This isn't me just like whining based on the people and uh, that I've run into, the players that I've run into. This isn't me just going, I want, I let people to stop doing this for the health of the game. No, what, what I'm really saying this for, what I really am trying to warn you about is that this is why your matches get so horrible when you get to high MMR. And this is for both sides. This is for Killer and Survivor. This is why your matches get so bad as your MMR goes up. Because here's the thing, if you're fighting a solo queue team and there's like a, there's like maybe a duo in their tops and you're running quad slowdown, you're running like an A tier character or, or better. For the most part, you're just going to win your games. You just are because the, the lack of coordination on their part and the overwhelming power of your perks is going to get the job done. Same thing on the same thing on the uh, survivor side. If you if you are going to be coming up against a group of survivors that all bring proof, all like they have proof resilience, they got toolboxes, and you're only running like one slowdown, and you're kind of just like having fair chases, you're not like chasing or you're not like camping or tunneling or anything like that. You're probably gonna lose just based on the stuff that they brought into the game, and there's nothing you can do about that. But, but as you go up in MMR. This stuff matters less and less and less. You go up MMR and a survivor team that's actually good and probably together, to be honest, because most people that play in higher MMR are usually grouping to some extent. They know how to play around a quad slowdown gamer. They do. I'm not saying like consistently, like they will always consistently beat those players. They have a much, much higher predisposition to handle somebody just slapping on slowdown because there's not really anything to outplay quote unquote with a bunch of slowdown because most slowdowns just go burr like there's not really counterplay to them there's nothing to outsmart but they know that they have to they have to make adjustments they have to do more call outs they have to greed gens they have to do all the stuff and then they flip a switch right if they see you doing that they know how to counter it they know how to kick it into high gear and make it happen 
so to speak. Same thing while you're playing Survivor. If you're if you're gonna try to like cheese a jet out in like like no seconds whatsoever, just like boom, and a killer sees that he he he's already noted in his head. He's like, I'm probably gonna have to camp or tunnel somebody at a certain point, probably, and he's not gonna feel bad about it. He's probably just gonna be like, eh, well, you rushed to the gen, so I'm going to rush the hook state <laughs> by by camping or tunneling. You know, like hired MMR players, you're gonna hit a ceiling. You're gonna hit a ceiling with all this cheesy stuff, all this play the game for me crap that you bring into the game is not going to play the game for you anymore. You're gonna hit a very, 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 very hard ceiling where none of this stuff just goes burr anymore. And both sides will start undoing all the cheesy stuff that you've been bringing to win for free. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real with you. If you're one of those gamers that are coming out here and you're you're like I'm gonna play Legion because heat synergies as well with with thanatophobia, especially in the, the first mid chapter situation. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, synergize it with thanatophobia, and I'm gonna run uh, ping res and and uh, play thing fundamental. Like if you're one of those people that's like I'm gonna slap on all this passive slowdown, like three or four of them, you are not gonna be you're not gonna be able to get consistent results with high MMR. That stuff is autopilot. That stop is autopiloting. You're asleep at the wheel. The game is quite literally handing you pressure for playing the game. Dana, you just hit people. Uh, pain res, you just, you're just hooking them. Um, Plaything, uh, the Plaything Penamento combo, like literally all they do is go, oh, they pop that totem, walk over and press a single button, and then suddenly the bar is even more red than it was before. Like, that, that's, that stuff's not hard, dude. I'm telling you, that stuff isn't difficult. You aren't good at the game for doing that. You you suck. You're bad. And that's that's why you get it. But like, here's the deal. Here's the flip side of this. Here's the dark side of this. Those players that are so used to just autopiloting and just slapping on purse to play the game for them, they get into high MMR and they're just like, wow, Swift broken. Wow. Comms is too strong. Wow. We really got, we really got to nerf Swift. Like, that's their takeaway. Their takeaway is not that maybe I've been running mostly, I've been playing mostly off my perks and not like actually like learning to have more efficient chases or having better map pressure. I, 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 I let my perks do that for me this whole time. So maybe it's time for me to learn. No, they're like, wow, Swift needs to be nerfed. Swift, Swift's too strong. It's comms, comms is ruining the game. That's it, 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 literally, that, that, that's, that's their go-to. That is their takeaway. That's literally their takeaway. And it, it was, and you, you've seen that. You've seen that on the survivor side with the main chapter that went through. When Deadheart got nerfed, everybody's like, it's the age of the killer. Killers just cried too much. And now they removed Deadheart. Why did they do that? That's so dumb. And it's like, no, homie, Deadheart was the problem. <laughs> Deadheart was the issue. And you weren't good this whole time because you pressed E key to get to a window or a pallet. You're seeing that with survivor right now. You were never good for eking to anything. There was nothing inherently skillful or smart about anything you did with the eki, with old dead heart. There was nothing inherently skillful about that. And you saw the amount of outrage that came from that because people, people were just like, oh, well, no, uh, you know, you just need to wait it out, blah, blah, blah. Like they, like they literally didn't get that they were freaking autopiloting. They didn't get that they were just coasting and autopiloting. They really thought, they really believed in their own crap. They believed in their own hype. They really thought they were doing something special when they weren't doing literally anything of any sort of value. And I think, to behavior's credit, a lot of the mid chapter took out a lot of cheese in the game. Mainly, like we just mentioned, Dead Hard and like the Ruin Pop situation, a Ruin Undying. Like, it, it removed a lot of the cheese, which is good. It's good. Good. But there's still a lot of cheese in the game. And. It's just, it's just sad that like all these people just slap on the autopilot, the cheesy stuff, and just kind of like fall asleep at the wheel, and then think they're actually good at the game. This is okay. So here's the thing. There's a okay. This is this is me being real because I I, I mostly conduct most of my media in the Twitch space. I know that's weird for you guys to watch the YouTube because like you're like, wait, you upload daily here. What do you mean you're more active there? I, I spend more hours on the Twitch side of things. So like that's, that's that's like my main zone. That's where that's where like, I mostly hang out at like twitch.tv slash the Mr. Headache if you want to come see me play Dead by Daylight. <laughs> um 
but that's mostly where I hang out. And obviously I get like I get raids, I get fellow uh, people that also stream hanging out and I check out their streams. I go and see what, what, what they're about, what they're doing. And there's so many people that are like hard stuck at like a certain number of like progression in like the Twitch system, whether that be number of subs, number of views, etc. They're like hard stuck. And I think one of the things that that boils down to is that people like to see good, entertaining play. They do. They like to see somebody pull off something cool or crazy. Some people just want a chill person to hang out with. That's fine. That, that, that's that's also another like audience for for like like what like people who watch Twitch. But a lot of people also watch Twitch and YouTube to get better at the game that they're watching, to get better at the game that they're watching, to improve at the game that they're watching. When I go and I check all, a lot of people out, and, and most of their games are just like, uh, but, but, you know, oh, overcharge, call up, right, eruption. I'm just like, and then they'll have like one non slowdown. They're like, I, brutal. <laughs> you know, it's, it's boring to me. I find those games boring to watch because this, I'm not going to see this guy make any like cool plays that I can carry over in any of my games because the perks are playing the game for him. And I, I'm telling you that like, other people feel that too. If if people look at your games and go, there's nothing to take away from that. Nothing's entertaining because your perks are mostly just kind of on autopilot. And B, there's no good plays happening because you mostly rely on your perks for good plays. It's like, what are we doing here? Like, like there's nothing to sink your teeth into. There's no like meat. There's no meat. There's no, there's no like, there's no sustenance here. There's nothing I can take from your from your play style and, and, and put it into mine. But yeah, if I can put in some sort of succinct to like uh, TLDR, um, slapping on easy, easy mode, strong perks, just whatever is the flavor of the meta that doesn't require a whole lot of effort from you, that is to your detriment as a player. You're going to have rougher games when you go up in MMR and people know how to counter the autopilot perks. If you, if, God forbid, you actually like try to like make entertainment out of this, like Twitch, YouTube, because nobody's going to watch your boring plays because you have nothing going on. And you're just going to whine and whine and whine and blame it on the game when it's really you not growing and adapting and actually learning anything worthwhile and just kind of like being lazy. There's no other way you're just being lazy. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that a lot of people that just kind of like run a bunch of slowdown perks or run a lot of second chance perks or have any merit to skill are they actually good at the game or do you think more on my end of things where they're just kind of like you know adding a lack of skill by slapping the stuff on and that's why they ultimately usually have a rough time in the game let me know down in the comments below but other than that thank you so much for watching i appreciate you so much for spending time with me today and i will see you when i see you goodbye <laughs>